I've been asked to keep my remarks to one page because Jamil Lott's here and wanted some extra time at the end to finish his senior day speech. <laughs> and if my remarks do get a little boring and you want to search Jay Zuloff's highlight video on YouTube, you're welcome to do that too, I won't mind. Um, before I get into my remarks, I've, I've been very fortunate to do the radio for Marquette basketball for the past 13 plus seasons. And I know uh, not all of my fellow inductees who I'm very honored to be uh, here with tonight had the opportunity that I've had these past years to be around this program, around this school and, and the people who work here. And sometimes when you hear about your school in the news or you know stuff pops up, it's not always stuff you might agree with or that you're popular, you think is popular, but um, I just want to reassure you guys that all the people that I've dealt with at this school uh, from top to bottom are all first class people who really go out of their way to try to help prepare young men and women to uh, really live the mission of Marquette and serve others. And if I can share a brief story with you about that service, um, a friend of mine did terrible things with his mouth. Uh, with tobacco over the years and basically wrecked his teeth. And uh, he had a job that had limited dental insurance and he had a little bit of money, but not a lot. And it was really a, a quality of life thing for him. His teeth were always bothering him. It was hard for him to eat. It affected his mental state. And I was talking to him about it one day and I said, you should maybe go to the Marquette Dental School and see if they'd be willing to do some work on you. Cause it, it's, I could, I, I'm not a dentist. His teeth were all jacked up. And, um, <laughs> I said, that, you know, they probably won't do it for free, but maybe they'll give you a discount or something. So he did, and he didn't even, like, pull a Jim McElvain card or anything. And uh, they worked out a price, and I'm not exaggerating when I say he made dozens and dozens of visits to the Marquette Dental School, and they basically rebuilt the guy's mouth. He's got a brand-new set of teeth uh, to the tune of deep into the six figures. I didn't know it would cost that much to rebuild a mouth, but they spent a lot of time and effort and somebody might have even gotten a doctoral thesis out of fixing this guy's teeth. <laughs> so if that's not service to others, I'm not sure what is. And if anybody's here from the dental school on, on behalf of him, I thank you very much for, for that generosity. Because it, it, as funny as the story is, it really changed his life in a positive way. His, his self-esteem's a lot better. His mood around his family's a lot better. And, and it's, it's life-changing. So thank you. Um, I also want to acknowledge my, my high school coach, Bob Letch, is here tonight with Coach Tark. Um, and of the one-tenth of one percent of the Marquette athletes that got in here, uh, the Hall of Fame, Crystal and Jim Jones and myself now make up 4.8 percent of that <laughs> one-tenth of one percent. And we're all from St. Catharines, so we're very proud of that. Um, so that was unexpected, and I'm, I'm happy to see them both here. Uh, other than that, my family's not here. Um, I just invited my coach, Kevin O'Neill. Um, my family's always been very supportive of my athletic endeavors, but they're about the most unathletic family you'd ever meet <laughs> outside of skiing. They like to ski a lot, and much to Coach O'Neill's dismay, they taught me how to like to ski a lot. And as soon as my house gets sold, I'm going to move to Florida and buy a house on a lake and go skiing a lot. Um, but I'm amazed uh, that God blessed me with the skills and ability that he did to play basketball. Uh, I'm honored and humbled to be included in such an elite group of Marquette student athletes. Um, and it's, it's amazing to look at this university. And, and I'm, I will say before I start, it's exponentially harder to create something from nothing than it is to improve something already created by even 20%. When I look at this school now, when I walk around campus, and uh, I first arrived here in 1990, the changes are profound and dramatic. Any empty lot that's left on property that Marquette owns probably has cranes and backhoes on it, and they're building something bigger and better. When I got here in 1990, our locker room had two leather couches and a big screen TV, and that was a really big deal. Um, we showered with the other male athletes in shared showers in the basement of the old gym. And the, uh, the wrestlers used that as their steam room when they were trying to cut weight. So it didn't always smell that great and sometimes you didn't feel like you really got clean when you came out of the shower. 
we had bathroom stalls with no doors on them. And we practiced in the old gym, which I know some of the sports are still at, but um, when we were there, uh, we had to start late on Thursdays because the ROTC had to march on Thursday afternoons. And so they got to go first and then men's basketball. Um, and then on the cold days, before they replaced the windows that were original to the building, we could see our breath on the court. And there were a lot of cold days. When I arrived and shortly before Marquette basketball was at a crossroads, they hired Bill Cords, who hired Kevin O'Neill, who brought Damon Key, Rob Lagerman, and myself into the program. The school and the Jesuits, and as you spend time, as I have over these past many years, hanging out with the Jesuits and talking to different people that have been a part of Marquette Athletics, you find out a lot of things. They realized in the, in the late 1980s that they needed to start spending money. They needed to join a conference, and they needed to get serious about competing at a high level, or they needed to let athletics go the way of the football program and focus on being a strong academic institution. For whatever Marquette lacked at that time in athletic resources, Humphrey Hall was a renovated apartment style dorm that the basketball team lived in. And it was nicer than anything I saw in any of my other visits to Pac-10, Big Ten, or SEC schools. And I got to stay there as a freshman. I could touch the walls on the upperclassmen dorm with my hands at Vanderbilt. They were so small. And that's where the upperclassmen lived. Humphrey Hall became my year-round home for the next four years, and even though I was less than a half hour from the home I grew up in, I never spent another night in my bedroom in Racine. Living in Humphrey Hall provided stability and consistency in my life at a time when I desperately needed it, and having all my teammates there allowed us to grow closer and support each other more than if we were spread all over the campus. I'm going to try not to cry because my wife who we just celebrated our 11th anniversary last weekend when I was out of town. Um, <laughs> she's never seen me cry, so she'd be not happy if I got up here and cried, and she wasn't here to see it. But our kids, as you guys saw at the barbecue last night, are terrors, and they wouldn't sit here <laughs> through this speech. Marquette did win a championship in 1977, but the landscape of college sports and basketball had changed dramatically since then just as it had for every other school, including several of our Catholic contemporaries at LaSalle, San Francisco, and Holy Cross, who also won NCAA championships. Some adapted better than others. My senior year of high school, Holy Cross was 24 and six, but they haven't won an NCAA tournament game since Eisenhower was in office in 1953, and they've had 11 losing seasons since I went to Marquette. San Francisco won two championships, but they haven't won an NCAA tournament game since 1979. They gave themselves a self-imposed four-year death penalty for cheating, and they haven't been to the tournament since 1998, and they've had 13 losing seasons since I went to Marquette. LaSalle was 30-2 and two my senior year of high school with my future teammate Tim Lagler and Lionel Simmons, but they've been back to the NCAA tournament exactly twice since I went to Marquette and they've had 19 losing seasons during that same span. Marquette was 15 and 14 in Kevin O'Neill's first year by the grace of T Tony Smith, who doesn't get enough credit for being a Rick Majerus recruit, who didn't turn his back on the school when there was a coaching change. And he's the guy that Kevin O'Neill refers to in his famous speech as the sword, and everybody else on the team was the spoon. And if you go to battle, you go to battle with the sword and he got in trouble from the parents of the spoons for calling them spoons. <laughs> He's called them worse. <laughs> and it also starts with an S. In the 29 seasons since Marquette hired Kevin O'Neill, we've had three losing seasons, along with 15 NCAA appearances, five Sweet 16s, two Elite Eights, a Final Four and three conference championships. Our 1993 NCAA appearance was the first one in 10 seasons. The longest absence since then was Mike Dean's last two seasons and Tom Crean's first two seasons. We had transfers pretty much every year I was there, but when Coach O'Neill left, no one transferred, 
and Aaron Hutchins didn't open his recruitment again, in part because Coach O'Neill told everybody not to leave. He told them they'd like playing for Mike Dean Moore, and many of them said they did. <laughs> Coach O'Neill left the cupboard stocked with five future 1,000-point scorers, two of them future NBA players, two of the best shot blockers in school history, and Marquette's all-time leader in assists, along with two great assistant coaches and Bo Ellis and Dan Thies to help keep continuity in the program. It's been a great journey, and I thank them all for what they've done for Marquette basketball. Mike Broker and coaches Crean, Williams, and Wojciechowski have let me stick around all these years to call basketball games with Homer and Kent. And it's been a, a, fab, a fabulous time. And uh, I'm, I feel like I, like I hogged it for so many years because it's so much fun to, to be around the school, be around the team, the program, see so many former players here, guys that have made this program what it is. And, and I'm, I'm honored to have that privilege. So I'd like to thank Father Rayner for hiring Bill Cords. I'd like to thank Bill Cords for hiring Kevin O'Neill. And I'd like to thank Kevin O'Neill for saving Marquette basketball. Thank you. Thank you.